Kapur. Our dear Chancellor, Your Highness King Caesar Augustus Mlenga, thank you very much for loving King Caesar University, for supporting us, and for endeavoring that this day is a success. I wish also to recognize the presence of our dear speaker, the Right Honorable Thomas Taibo, Chairman Board of Trustees. Thank you very much, much uh, dear speaker, for gracing this function with your dear wife. And here we are. Uh, we are going to start Eucharistic celebration and we would request the music team to switch off so that we start mass. Please, let's switch off. Your grace, you are welcome to King's Day University. We are happy to receive you on such a momentous day. And we are happy that you will be presiding over this Eucharistic celebration. And I hand over. You're welcome, Your Grace. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. This is a Thanksgiving ceremony, Thanksgiving Mass, for God is blessing, blessings upon us for this day today, for our successes the graduates. We place ourselves before God and ask him to bless us as we begin this function. And we ask him that if there is anything wrong that we have done, we seek for mercy. And so we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that have greatly sinned 
my thoughts and my words not have done through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May the mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Dear people of God, we are now going to listen to the word of God. It's going to be proclaimed by one of our graduates. The first reading. A reading from the Acts of Apostles. The word of God continued to spread and to gain followers. Barnabas and Saul completed their task and came back from Jerusalem, bringing John Mark with them. In the church at Antioch, the following were prophets and teachers. Barnabas Simon called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene, my name, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetiak and Saul. One day, while they were offering worship to the Lord and keeping a fast, the Holy Spirit said, I want Barnabas and Saul set apart for the work to which I have called them. So it was that after fasting and prayer, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So these two sent on their mission by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia, and from there sailed to Cyprus. They landed at Salamis and proclaimed the word of God in the synagogues of Jews, John acted as their assistant. The word of the Lord. The response of Psalm, our response is, Let all the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. O God, be gracious and bless us. And let your face shed its light upon us. So will you always be known upon earth and all nations learn your saving hope. Our response. Let all the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Let the nations be glad and exult for you rule the world with justice. With fairness, you are rule with the people. You guide the nations on the earth. Our response. Let all the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Let the people praise you, O God. Let the people praise you. Let all the, let all the people praise you. May God still give us his blessing till the end of the earth. Reveal him. Our response. Brethren, let's stand up and welcome the gospel.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 44 to 50. Jesus declared publicly, Whoever believes in me, believes not in me, but in the one who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees the one who sent me. I, the light, have come into the world, so that whoever believes in me need not stay in the dark anymore. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them faithfully, it is not I who shall condemn him, since I have come not to condemn the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and refuses my words has his judge already. The word itself that I have spoken will be his judge on the last day. For what I have spoken does not come from myself. No. What I was to say, what I had to speak, was commanded by the Father who sent me. And I know that his commands mean eternal life. And therefore, what the Father has told me is what I speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Deputy Speaker, Right Honorable Thomas Tayebwa, and we need your dear wife. Our Chancellor, King Siza Mulenga, Dr. Chris Oriomunsi, Chairperson University Council, and all council members. Our Vice Chancellor, Dr. Charity Mlenga, Senate members, Honorable Ministers, Your Excellencies, the Ambassadors, Your Excellency Archbishop Agassin Kasujia and Nuncio, members of Parliament, our University Senior Management Team, members of staff, Dear Professor Mary Okoroko, Executive Director of National Council of Higher Education, my brother priests, religious men and women, graduates and dear parents, ladies and gentlemen, all of you people of God, I extend my warm greetings to each one of you and convey my heartfelt Easter blessings to you all. Alleluia, alleluia, he's risen from the dead. For those who didn't know, Easter for us Christians, particularly Catholics, is not only one day, 
We celebrate it until Pentecost Sunday, 50 days after Easter. And every Lord's Day on Sunday is Easter for us. So we thank God for the gift of Easter, and I would like to, th to congratulate you upon the successful season of Lent, and now on this fourth Sunday of Easter, congratulate you upon the celebrations of Easter, the success, a triumphant success of the rising of Jesus Christ from the dead. It is with great joy that I join you today as we celebrate the fourth graduation ceremony of King Caesar University. And I thank the management for the invitation. I'm glad to be here. Very much impressed. I thank the proprietors of this university for the charity vision generosity that they have, not only for this country, but even beyond. I have been told that many of our students here have scholarships given by the university itself. I congratulate all the graduates of today and I thank you for inviting me to be part of this special occasion. The fact that we are beginning with mass is also another noble cause, showing that we are Christians, we are believers, that God is first in this university. And you took time and effort to invite us as leaders of the church to come and be with you. And the first thing that we are going to do before anything else is to present ourselves to God, our Creator. Thank you for that faith. Thank you for the profession of this faith, which has been expressed loudly in this gesture. Dear brothers and sisters, as we commemorate yet another significant milestone of this university, it is only fitting to thank the Lord, the author of all knowledge, who has provided for our students during their learning journey here. We are also thankful for his guidance that has enabled the lecturers and the staff in this university to fulfill their duty of imparting knowledge to these graduates. Let us continue to thank God for his blessings and goodness to us all. In addition, we extend our heartfelt thanks to the founders of this university for their commitment and passion for educating young people which led to the establishment of this Eastern Moody institution. Similarly, we deeply appreciate the administration, staff, parents, and benefactors who have devoted their time, resources, and expertise to the education of these young men and women. Thank you all for your invaluable contributions. Dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this significant milestone in the lives of these graduates and in the history of this university, we are reminded of the victory of Christ through his resurrection, which we are joyously celebrating during the Easter season. Just as Christ triumphed over death, you, dear graduates, have triumphed 
over the challenges and obstacles that came your way during your academic journey at King Caesar University. In the first reading, which we heard from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, we witnessed the growth of the church and the dedication of the peoples and the apostles to sharing the good news. Despite facing challenges and persecution, they remained steadfast in their faith, relying on the power of prayer and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We have also heard what transpired at Antioch, where the Holy Spirit set apart Barnabas and Saul for a special mission. This highlights the call for each one of us and the particular graduates of today. Just like Barnabas and Saul, we are called to be witnesses of the gospel, to share the good news of salvation with all whom we encounter. But what, do we, what does it mean to be witnesses? Being a witness means living out our faith in every aspect of our lives. It means being a light in the darkness, showing others the way to Christ through our words and actions. It means boldly sharing your talents and knowledge with the world. <coughs> it also means serving others with the skills you have acquired here. It means learning from Jesus Christ himself, offering our lives for others. The Gospel of John, chapter 12. <coughs> Father illuminates this call to witness. Jesus declares I have come as light into the world, that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness, as we read in John chapter 12. Christ, the light of the world, calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. He invites us to embrace his teachings, to live according to his commandments, and reflect his light to others. And as Bodil told us in Matthew chapter 5, that you are the light of the world, you are the salt of the earth. So dear graduates, today as you step into a new chapter of your lives, the world eagerly awaits the witness and contributions you will make with your new found skills and knowledge. But remember, the world needs not just skilled individuals, but ethical and compassionate leaders, especially in a time when ethical practices are often overlooked. Vices like corruption, bribery, dishonesty, lack of accountability, substance abuse, favoritism, and so on, should find no room in your professional world, dear graduate. Is it not embarrassing that a country like Uganda, which is almost 99% believers, the cancer of corruption is eating us away? Theft, very, very embarrassing. 
for us Christians. And I think we have been challenged in many ways. At one time, His Excellency the President said, majority of the people that I employ are your followers, you leaders of, 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 of religions. They are the ones that you send to me. And they said, they are the leaders, and many of them are corrupt and abuse office. It would be very embarrassing. I have every effort, every, every confidence in you, as I look you, at you, graduates, that you are going to make a difference in the society. In your different professions. To follow those, a few of, of them who stand out and remain uh, royal to the call of Jesus Christ and be the light of the world, the salt of the earth. I therefore encourage you to remain steadfast in your commitment to integrity and moral values and let your work reflect the goodness and righteousness that Christ teaches us. Lastly, I invite you to be innovative and hardworking, always striving to make a positive, impact, a positive impact in your chosen fields. And I know, especially in the field of medicine. But amidst your successes, never forget the journey that has brought you here. The journey of hard work, the journey of selfless parents and guardians, the journey of committed and dedicated professors and lecturers, the journey has been, which has been giving you sleepless nights as you prepare for this graduation and for you the future. Remember that and be faithful to it. Just as the Lord has led you through challenges and triumphs, let his guidance continue to inspire and guide you in your endeavors. You have been skilled and equipped. Don't go out there and become idle. Do not become skilled beggars to go to office to office looking for sympathy. Incapable of using acquired skills to, to initiate work in society. Start from now as you go out in society to contribute and use the skills that you have acquired to even the world, to make the world even better than you found it. So as we celebrate this academic success, let us take inspiration from the early disciples who were bold in their witness of the risen Lord and so impacted the world. Let us pray that just as Christ's resurrection brought hope and new life to the world, this celebration opens up endless possibilities for the graduates to make a positive impact on society. And I'm happy this day is already making a better life for many of us who have come to join. As I came in, a young man welcomed me and thanked me for coming and he offered to, to, to to usher me in quickly. And I said, but, but, but are you one of the managers here? And he said, no, 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 no. I have come to make a living. I'm a photographer. <laughs> and I want to take your photograph. <laughs> so you are creating jobs for many of us today. May Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, the bread of life, 
grant us the grace to bear witness to him by way of our work and our lives. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Augustine, our patron, and the Holy Martyrs of Uganda intercede for us all. Amen. continue to appreciate his grace the Archbishop for nourishing us so well with the word of God and, and now I invite all people of God please to stand and I invite those who are going to pre present the prayers of the faithful who are going to represent all of us gathered here to present some of our needs to God please to come forward at this pulpit or at this ambo. Dear, dear brothers and sisters, filled with Paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly God, that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved son may now be pleased to look upon us in our loneliness. Members who are going to present the prayers of the faithful, please come. lifting up our voices in petition and prayer for our beloved church. We are grateful for the privilege of gathering together in your name and recognize the importance of seeking our guidance and blessing. May your peace that surpasses all the understanding guard your people's hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, Lord, we pray. civil leaders. Gracious and compassionate God, we ask that you grant our civil leaders the knowledge and understanding to make just and righteous decisions that promote the well-being and welfare of all people. Give them discernment to distinguish evil from what is right and encourage them to, understand, to stand firm in their commitments. May they lead by example leading their people with honesty, integrity, compassion, and faith. Lord, we pray.
A prayer for graduands. Almighty Father, we come before you today with hearts filled with gratitude and joy as we lift up our graduands in prayer. We thank you for the journey they have accomplished and the knowledge they have acquired. Lord, we give thanks for the opportunities that await ahead for these graduands as they embark on their careers. We trust in your unfailing love and ask for your continued guidance and blessings as they enter the next chapter of their lives. Lord, we pray. administration. Heavenly Father, we pray for our university administration and all stakeholders. We thank you for their vision and commitment to serving our country, Uganda, in providing a platform for higher education. Under their able leadership, may this institution flourish and may it be a piece of press of running, growth and transformation for all passing through its doors. Lord, we pray. for continuing students. Almighty Father, you are the source of wisdom and knowledge. We pray asking you to grant the continuing students clarity in thought, focus and understanding as they strive to achieve their dreams. Help them to retain what they have studied and apply it in their forthcoming exams. Fill their minds with confidence and calmness, knowing that you are with them every step of their academic journey. Lord, hear us. A prayer for the dead. God Almighty, we lift up to you those who mourn for the loss of their beloved ones. Comfort them in their grief. Surround them with your love and peace. We pray for the souls of the departed that you grant them eternal peace and rest in your presence. May they experience, may they experience the fullness of your love and your grace. Lord, we pray. but you are God for your personal petition. O oh God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, Hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we be seated, please. And this is the moment to offer in thanksgiving to God for all the achievements of this university, particularly as we thank God for the graduates today. There will be ushers going through the tents. If you have any monetary gift you'd like to offer, please feel free to do so. And I'd like to invite those who have been chosen to bring other gifts 
that have been offered in Thanksgiving by the university management, please to go at that side down where the graduates are and then to be brought shortly. I'm 
Penyanda, penyanda, penyanda. Oni ni romo pira, vikonde, tena, mto kaza mpaka, misinde. Obo na nyama udia kwata kutimu yo, muri jizona. Katika kasera, ofuno la popular mizanyo ruganzi. Garuani kido ba kuguaveri la vivi mizanyo. Songa tena wamusi waka popular, lori popular ino kwe kuata woka. Tosuwa ba kuguaveri benga ulanga ba kuaudi kuaudi asava, ulona wa viro muanguzi. Penyanda, ruani kido muri mio ruganda. Tosuwa ba diwa kuna, kushiring si rukumi roka. Eno diri yangu yaka rukwe roka benga ulolo, mukuma nyavi mizanyo, ulo sukuru meko, kubadia ba ulo koso. Penyanda, efrimes wamu nta publications limited. Sauti Awards winner Nanyini Luimbo Ruaka Miro Azuko Luchukuyo Mwaka Guno The Beautiful Voice Queen Wanamora Kuhimide Nyimba Sedini Ezi Kwa Taku Mutima Ezi Kwa Amani Ezi Kwa Subi Ezi Tendele Zwa Mutonzi E Nyimba Nga Wano Tata Uwaruma Awo Yantero Mukisa Kwa Semba Yo Nendara Nyingi Nyo Gavin Tate Aguse Ku Sheraton Kampala Hotel Gardens Muna Amuri La Shengze Mtuwa Rukumi Zedye Mtuwa La Satu Emeza Video Ni Satu Buki Nganga Mucha Arikuwa Noti Musangu Noti Nya Satu Biri Mwenda Tano Satu Mwenda Kwa Noti Musangu Tano Satu Munane Mwe Mu Noti Satu Mwenda Katonda Kwa Daibiru Mugi Muja Tu Cheze Gavin Tate Live In Cheze For Yesu Concert Kwa Na Musangu May Sheraton Kampala Hotel Gardens Hewa Gidu NTV Nesbak TV Welcome to the world of Forest Resort Reza, where luxury blends with affordability. Ideal for weddings, parties, and all your special occasions. Our venue has exotic gardens that set the stage for unforgettable moments. Enjoy our luxurious rooms. Elegant swimming pool, the fantastic atmosphere and our kids park that adds a touch of joy for our younger guests. Join us every Friday for live music at Forest Resort Reza. It's more than a resort. This is where luxury becomes affordable. During weekends, we do like a grill in a come together, like sort of party. It's a community event, so people have to eat and have their bellies full to think a little bit faster when they are playing. You know, you have bragging rights in the hood. I'm like, my guy won the game. upon them like the dew fall, so that it become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, 
take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.